excellent webinar in store for you today. We're talking, especially in the world of work from home, work from anywhere, this is a super important topic. So we are talking tips for choosing a new router for your home um, that's gonna work for you and, and keep you connected. So Eric, take it away whenever yeah, you're ready. You betcha, my pleasure. Let me hit the old share button here and uh, give that a whirl. And give me the thumbs up if you can see that. Perfect. Okay, awesome, awesome. So here we go, guys. We're gonna give you some tips for choosing a new home router. And really, we're just gonna talk about Wi-Fi at home in general today. You might be an expert and all of this is pretty easy stuff, but you know what? You may have to find yourself explaining how all of this works to a loved one or to an associate. And so we're gonna hopefully help you out with a little bit of that today. And so, hey, uh, away we go. So let's check this out. Okay, let me just get my mouse going here. There we go. So first of all, why would you even bother doing this? Why would you buy? Okay, because we can get a router access point from our ISP. And when we do, you know, we got it. So what's the big deal? Why do I even want to do this? Well, there are two reasons that I came up with. And, and one is because we want to go faster and because we want control. And actually one has to do with the other. In order to go faster, we need to have some additional control. Okay. And let me demonstrate what I mean by that. I remember when, um, you know, when you have a, when you have a house full of people, and, you know, what is what does the ISP say to you? They say, oh, well, you know, you need to increase your speed, increase your speed. Well, of course, because that gets you into a more expensive plan. But there is some truth to that. Let me explain. I remember when I heard Keith Parsons make this comment and I never forgot it. It had a big impact on me when he said, hey, don't throttle your guest networks. Because when guest guests come onto your network and you're throttling them to like five megabits per second and you're not give, allowing them the ability to go as fast as they can, you run the risk of causing congestion. Remember, if we're all dealing with the same channel, 36, and you've got a guest SSID on channel 36 and you have a corporate network on channel 36 and your guests come along, you don't know what they're going to do. Your guests might decide they want to download a one gigabyte movie. And it's going to take forever for them to do that because you've throttled them. Instead, let everybody go as fast as they can. Get them on, get them off. Get them on, get them off. Clear the channel, as you guys know. All right. We were, when we're talking about Wi-Fi, the, the, the listen before talk protocol, we want to make sure that the channel is clear before we can really do anything, any transmitting or receiving. So get them on, get them off, get them on, get them off. I've never forgotten that. And actually, when you got a whole house full of people, it's the same thing. You want, <laughs> you're only as good as your weakest link. And, and unfortunately, you know, you need to make sure that your slowest devices are going as fast as humanly possible so that they can free up the channel more quickly. Okay. So with that said, let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. Check this out, guys. This is a great example of what we run into at home. This is an apartment building. The service provider hands out routers to everybody in the building. And lo and behold, everybody's either on this channel or this channel, right? Channel third, 80 megahertz wide bonded, or channel 149, using up these uni three channels. And look at what we've got here. So one of the reasons why we want to go out and get our own router is because when we try to go in here and reconfigure in order to find some kind of better experience, usually the DFS channels here in the middle are not configurable with your home router. You go into your home router right now, whatever that address is, and you look at the channels that are available to you to select and basically, you don't have a lot of choices. You don't have, have a lot of options. They don't make these available because they don't want to deal with it. Okay. As you guys know, these DFS channels, it's a shared resource with things like weather radar and stuff like that. And so they don't want to take the chance of you having a horrible, terrible experience. So let's just remove those from the equation. And you can either set up shop on this end of the spectrum or set up shop on the other end of the spectrum. And it's interesting because this is basically what I call extreme channel contention, XCC. Now, if you're curious about where that came from, you are correct. 
I made it up. Extreme channel contention or bumper to bumper traffic. Okay, remember everybody here is contending for that same channel. And it's just gonna be, the protocol is gonna do a pretty good job of making sure that everybody gets a turn, right? But you are gonna have a Wi-Fi experience that is gonna be kind of inconsistent. It's gonna be kind of great and then bad and then great. Especially during those times, like in the evening when everybody in the building is online and using the internet. Now here's a funny thing, look over here guys. You've got some, some poor souls who went into their router and they tried to do some reconfiguring in order to maybe help themselves out. Oh, wow, you know, why don't I try this? Why don't I try that? Well, these efforts are futile, as you know, because of all of this contention that's still taking place. I mean, these frames are just gonna collide in the air like you wouldn't believe. Now, what we have identified here are some people who have done something smart. Okay, what they've determined is that, hey, this channel 165 is open and they've determined that they can have a better experience on a skinny 20 megahertz wide channel that does not have a lot of this extreme channel contention than if they went with the, the VHT, very high throughput 80 megahertz wide channel that does have to deal with this extreme channel contention. So that's really interesting to note. You may be experiencing this right now and you don't even know it. And that's why we use systems and tools in order to help us identify that this is actually what's taking place. Eight times out of 10, it is taking place. And so this is one of the reasons why we then say to ourselves, you know what, I'm going to go get my own home router. I'm going to get my own, set up my own uh, setup at, here at home because I want to be able to deal with this issue on my own. However, there are some things that we need to answer. Here are some questions. First, in, if you want to walk down this path, okay, what we need to figure out, guys, and we need to answer this question, how fast can you go versus how fast will you go? We need to figure this out, okay? And we're going to work on that together. Second question, how much are, will you pay your ISP? ISPs are not charities. If you want to go faster, you're going to have to pay to go faster. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. How much are you willing to pay for how fast you want to go? Third, okay, so what are you going to need to gather up? What are you going to need to buy in order to accomplish this? Okay, you're going to need one of these and one of those components, one of these components in order to put this setup together. And you got to come up with the total cost of ownership, the total price before you make any decisions. Otherwise, you're going to get frustrated. Oh, man, I didn't know that I needed one of those. I didn't know that I needed to buy a router. I didn't know that I needed to buy a modem. You got to add that into the total price. Fourth, what are you willing to spend on all of this? Okay, this starts to add up. And then finally, how do you shop? And there's something called the Camuli formula, which is flawed, of course, because I made it up. But the Camuli formula is simply a guide that you can use, imperfect, of course, but a guide that you can use in order to shop for a new router for your home in order to figure out really the answer to this question number one, how fast can you go versus how fast will you go? So that'll be a little bit of fun. So let's, let's take a look here. All right, so let's walk down the road of trying to figure out how fast we can go. And I've got a bunch of devices up here on the screen with their capabilities and limitations. First, let's start out on the left side of our screen. Okay, we've got a single stream device one by one, one input, one output, single stream device. And we can also see by looking at the wireless LAN adapter that it is AC protocol, as opposed to what we see in these other two devices, which are two by two and three by three. If you're not aware, two by two means that I can transmit on two streams simultaneously and receive on two streams simultaneously, literally doubling your ability to go fast. A three by three device literally triples your ability to go fast. It is a big deal. It's a big deal. You gotta know your spatial streams of your device. Otherwise it is impossible for you to calculate how fast you're capable of going, okay? And again, I've underlined here the AX protocol because that matters, right? With AX, we now can take advantage of 1024 QAM, which gives us the ability to go a little bit faster. So we wanna know that. 
Not only that, but it is important to be on the latest standard, the latest protocol. That's my recommendation. That's my suggestion. Find out what the latest is, 802.11ax, also called Wi-Fi 6. And if you are going to make any purchases in this realm, it's best to be on the latest standard. So that's important to pay attention to. Now, when over here, you can see this is my MacBook that I have in my house also. And you, it, MacBooks are not going to tell you, oh, it's, it's 802.11ac or ax. Okay, so what they're going to do is you have to look up the model number. You see that, guys? Okay, and I've got this link right here. You see this, support.apple.com. And it basically tells you, if you look at that link, it basically tells you, oh, well, if you have a model from, you know, 2017 to 2019, then it's going to have these wireless capabilities. If you have a 2020 or 2021 device, then it's going to have these wireless capabilities. So with Max, you've got to look at the model, the make model of the device in order to then go online and see what are the specs or what are the capabilities. Here's another one down here, guys. This is important. Your Xbox, all right? You want your Xbox or your PlayStation or whatever to go as fast as it can. What are its capabilities? All right, so you wanna know. You gotta go out and do the research. And when you Google and when you look around and when you search, you'll find that the latest and greatest Xbox, which is the Series X, that's like, you know, the best, I think it's, I, I talked to Josh in the office and he says that's the, the latest and greatest. It's got 802.11ac, and it's a two by two. That's important to note. Again, it's going to directly correlate to how fast I can go, which is important in understa understanding how fast I will go, right? So there you have it. Now we take this information. This is just step one. We take this information and we put it into our handy dandy MCS index guide in order to learn more about the speeds and the capabilities. All right. So that's what I've done here. Guys, if you haven't been to mcsindex.com, I mean, mcsindex.com is like rapidly becoming one of my favorite websites. You know why? Because it teaches me so much. Every time I go into that table, I learn more about devices and capabilities and limitations. So I would highly recommend you get to know mcsindex.com. I define myself there, you know, once a day, learning more about, oh, how fast can this go? And oh, wow, what, what, what channel width and protocol and qualm? Let's look at the three devices that I was just referring to a moment ago. A single stream device, a two stream device, and a three stream device. Okay, and what I've included here is 256 QAM and 1024 QAM. Remember, you can achieve the 1024 QAM if you have a Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax router talking to an 802.11ax access point. Okay, and a lot of, or I'm sorry, uh, device. And a lot of devices today are coming out, or you know, are all Wi-Fi 6 adapters. And so, therefore, that's why it would be important to go out and buy a router, which is 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6, because you can go a little bit faster under really nice, good conditions. Okay. But look at this here, guys. All right, so this is OFDM. What that means is that this is going to be your wireless AC, and OFDMA, OFDMA is going to be your AX, okay, or Wi-Fi 6. Now, here we go. Let's look at what the capabilities are of these different devices. I don't even regard 160 megahertz wide channels because 160 megahertz wide channels are difficult, if, impo if not impossible, to configure on your home router. Okay, they give you a checkbox, and the checkbox says VHT, very high throughput, check here, or uncheck because by default it's checked. And that is basically going to create an 80 megahertz wide channel. All right, it's the, you do not have a lot of options in there to create a 160 megahertz wide channel, nor would you want to, because that actually can be very problematic as well at home, okay, and in the enterprise and the office. You're not going to want to do that until we get to Wi-Fi 6E. 
Then we'll start experimenting more on the six gigahertz um, band of spectrum with 160 megahertz wide channels. We don't do that today on the five gigahertz band, however, even with, uh, with uh, Wi-Fi 6. But what this indicates here is how fast I should be able to go on an 80 megahertz wide channel on a single stream device, 433 megabits per second. Or if I have Wi-Fi 6, this is about how fast I could go, 600 megabits per second. That's it. That's the limit. If I have a two stream device, okay, like most Windows devices are, most Windows laptops, if not all of them, are going to be two stream devices. So you heard it here, just memorize it. Most of your new phones that you buy today, your iPhones and your Samsung phones, are going to be two stream devices, if not all of them. Most, if not all of them, are two stream devices. And this is going to basically tell you how, what your maximum speed can be. Again, if you're on AC or if you're on AX, 1201. That's 1,201 megabits per second. That's a theoretical speed that you should be able to go. And then finally, if you have a three stream device, which is going to be your MacBooks, your MacBook Pros, okay? Some MacBooks, just, you know, your MacBook Airs, those are two by twos, but your MacBook Pros are three by threes. It's really one of the only three by three devices out there that, that consumers can buy. Literally tripling your ability to go fast. It's a force multiplier. So now you know, Windows devices two by two, MacBook Pros three by three. Look at this, it's a force multiplier. You see that? Okay, it's basically 433 times three is gonna get you to your 1300. Same thing over here, your 400 or your 600 times three is gonna get you to your 1800. Very simple math, very simple math, okay? So that's important to note. So now we know the theoretical capabilities of our computer based upon whether it's a single stream, two stream, three stream device, whether it's whether, uh, and also based upon whether it's AC or AX. All right, now let's look at ISPs. This is Xfinity by Comcast. So I went online and I took a look at their website in order to see what's going on here. They've got these different plans. And so remember, in a house full of people, we want to go as fast as we can. So I'm interested in the gigabit Ethernet, or the, I'm sorry, the gigabit plan that they have over here, as you can see, up to 1,200 megabits per second. That's what I'm interested in. So I'm going to look at the fine print. Wi-Fi equipment included for 24 months. You know what they're talking about? They're talking about the modem router access point. That's what they're talking about. They, want, they give you one unit that has everything you need inside of it. It's got the coaxial cable to come in from, okay, to, to, to and that's gonna go into the modem portion, okay? And then you've got your layers three and four, your networking stuff that you gotta do, that's your router portion. And then your layers one and two, which is your Wi-Fi stuff with your antennas, okay? It's all included in one box. And what they're saying here is that they're gonna give that to you, it's included in the price for 24 months, two years. Normally, if you look at your bill, you're probably paying kind of like a rental fee for that, 10 bucks a month, okay? Depending upon where you are, nine, 10, $11 a month. That times 12, okay? That's about $120 a year that you're paying. And so one of the strategies is that you can get that and you can get your own stuff and you don't have to pay those rental fees again. But again, there's a cost benefit analysis. So there you have it. So once that is up, that's going to probably go from $79 to $89, isn't it? And so you got to keep that in, you got to keep that in mind. This is Spectrum. Spectrum is my internet service provider where I live. So let's look at their gig plan. Well, they're already at $89 a month. Look at that. Okay. And it says their top speeds, one gigabit per second. Not bad. And then finally, this is Cox, Cox Communication. And Cox, they've got their plan and it's $99 a month, okay? And, and it's funny, they put this information in here, connect up to nine devices at once. It doesn't even make sense. Nine, 10, how did that, where'd they come up with nine? I mean, it's just weird. So really doesn't make any sense whatsoever. 
However, what I do want you to pay attention to here, guys, is right here in the middle. This is the first indication, looking at these three websites, the first indication somebody's saying what the upload speeds are, okay? I, for Spectrum and for Xfinity, I couldn't even find them. I looked all over the website. What are the upload speeds? What are the, can't find it. This is the first time that they're actually telling you 35 megabits per second upload speeds. And isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? You know, gosh, if that was just 100 megabits per second, that would be so, so nice. But I don't know why they do this. Put it in the chat if you know why ISPs do that. Somebody told me a long time ago, it's to prevent people from like doing BitTorrent type stuff. It's to prevent people from, you know, up, uh, you know, it's just to prevent jamming up the links and uploading a lot of content that can then be pirated. If you know, let me know. I think our audience would appreciate it. And Heather can try to find that answer when we get to the end. But there you have it, 35 megabits per second, one gigabit down, awesome. Now, how are you going to accomplish this? Let's take a close look. What is the hardware that you need? So in order to check that out and make sure we're all on the same page, we got this nice little diagram from our friends at Eris, makers of the surfboard. Okay, that's the modem that I have in my house. But here you go, guys. Here's the internet. <clears throat> and here's your modem. Okay, modem, modulate, demodulate. That's what modem means. Okay, so it's taking that signal coming in from your ISP, and we've got to convert it into something that, you know, your house can understand. So you got to have a modem. Then the router, you've got to have a router because you need to take into account those, those layers three, you know, four and three before you get to your layers two and one, which is your actual Wi-Fi access point. So we just call it a router because it's a two and one. Okay, the router is built in with the access point. You know, you got those, those ports in the back. You've got to have that. You just can't take an Aruba access point and plug it into your modem and think it's going to work. It's not, okay? You need to be able to have those layers three and four of the OSI stack kind of taken care of for you. So that's why you need all three pieces of equipment. This is what I have in my house. I have an, a surfboard modem. I've got a little TP-Link router and I've got my access point, okay? Which happens to be an, an old uh, Aruba 315. Or you can just get a combined unit. And this is typically what you're getting from your ISP that you're paying $10 a month for. It's got everything in one. It's got the modem, it's got the router, and it's got the wireless. Okay. And you can buy these also, or you can buy them all separate like this. And so you've got to just make sure that you know what you need. Here's an example of one of those all-in-one units. It's got everything in it and look and pay attention to the price, $349. And you're gonna to wanna to write that down because you're gonna compare it to what would it cost if I wanted to buy all of these different parts separately, okay? All right, so here's the option. The option is to buy those parts separately. So this right here is an example of a two-in-one wireless router. It's got layers one and two and the three and four in there, okay? So it's got what you need. And then here, is your modem. So when you add this up, 179 plus 145, you're kind of in the ballpark of what we were just looking at, aren't we? Which is like your $350, okay? Or a little more or a little less. So you need to be able to kind of understand those components and how they need to work together, all right? So that's what you do. All right, let's take another step at this, another look at this. All right. The other thing I wanted to share with you is, well, sometimes, you know, I just want to get an extender, a Wi-Fi extender, okay? And it's going to help satisfy the coverage issues that I have. Really? Is it? Okay. I don't call, you know, it's not a Wi-Fi, it's just Y extender is what I say. Here's an example of an extender. Okay, so you're going to pay $71, $72. Sometimes these things are, you know, $80, $90. And you're doing this because you think you want more coverage, okay? Because you want more coverage. Well, first of all, you it's another SSID, 
And it's another SSID because it has to rebroadcast everything that's being broadcast already from your initial network. So you're going to have your initial network. Let's just say it's home network. Now you're going to have home network extend EXT that you're going to connect to. All right. And the other thing that's really important is that this is one by one. And so that's going to cut your throughput in half if you're on a Windows device. So these are bad news in my opinion. Okay. If speed is important to you, and we've just been talking about how important it is, you're going to go out and spend all of this money on Wi-Fi and getting the best router that you can get and choose the one that you, th and then you're going to, you're going to connect to your extender. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Not recommended. Now, a lot of you out there are saying, well, I, I, I really do have serious coverage issues. And I can't move my router to the middle of my home, which is my first suggestion. That's always my first recommendation is figure out a way to get your router into the middle of your house out into the open. Don't tuck it in the corner somewhere. Okay, I recently was able to do this when I unplugged um, my cable box and I went with my Roku. Right, so I got a Roku and over here I got an Apple TV over there. All of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh. Now that I unplugged my cable box, I've got this coaxial cable in the middle of my house. So I moved my whole setup downstairs to my living room. And now I get really good coverage all over my house because I was able to do that. So just a story. All right, so let's look at these mesh systems because these mesh systems are becoming very popular and they cost a bit of money. And so you're gonna to wanna to know what you're getting yourself into if you go out and you buy a mesh system. The idea of the mesh system is let's create this blanket of five gigahertz coverage by putting these little nodes all around my house. I got one upstairs, I got one downstairs, I got one over there, right? And it creates this big blanket of coverage so that no matter where I am, I should be able to get the good coverage and therefore the good speeds because your signal strength is directly correlated to how fast you can go. You're never gonna get to 256 QAM or 1024 QAM if you don't have really good signal strength, okay? So it's important. All right, so first of all, you still need a modem or a router to plug into, okay? And usually what people are doing is that they continue to pay $10 a month to their ISP and they just use what their ISP gave them and they just plug into the router in the back. Again, you need those, those, those upper layers, three and four, those network layers, right? So you're gonna have to plug it into some kind of a router and modem to get to the outside world, all right? So that's, you know, first thing that you need to consider. The other things that you need to consider are these things right here. If you don't place these things perfectly around your house, your cell sizes are going to be all crazy, too big, too small, overlapping. It's going to confuse your computer and cause problems when you roam. We see this everywhere we go. People are upstairs and then they go downstairs and their devices are still connected to the little node, the little Orby or the little thing upstairs. And then they're downstairs and they're connected to it. And then they go upstairs and they'll still connect it to the one downstairs. You can't see it. You don't know how big the cell size is. You're going to walk around with your Eka House sidekick in your house. Well, maybe some of you are. That'd be pretty cool. <clears throat> but you run into these problems. You don't have control over, oh, I want to, and maybe you don't even, and maybe you do have control in the, in the module to control transmit power, but you don't know how that's going to affect things. And again, you don't know how big or how small these cells are and with barriers to propagation, what the overlap is going to look like in order to trigger that point of roam. It's very confusing. And so the marketing, they sell you on these, oh, get this blanket of coverage. But I'll tell you what, this is what we see. This is what we see, okay? All of these nodes are all on the same channel. This is a Google Home network. They're all on the same channel. And the dB difference between the node that's upstairs and the node downstairs is not enough to trigger a roam. And so people, they buy these systems and they spend good money on them and they're not achieving what they thought they would achieve. They're all on the same channel. Okay, so it's like, let's just say the kids are playing upstairs on the computer. Well, they're on channel 149. 
and you're downstairs trying to do work and you, and you think you're connected to the node downstairs and that it's magically some kind of like different channel, uh-uh. If it's like this, and this is what 80% to 90% of the mesh networks are like out there, okay? They don't have two channels. They're all on one channel. And so again, you run the risk of that extreme channel contention where everybody is bumper to bumper and they're gonna go slow. You thought that you were making a great decision for you and your family. Well, you just, you either made it worse or you didn't make it better. Again, I'm of the opinion, it's my recommendation is get the goods in the middle of your house. You don't need a mesh network. You know, I would, I would rather, you know, if, if I had a huge home and I don't, but if I had a huge, you know, 5,000 square foot home and I really, really needed that coverage, I would personally figure out how to run a cable to another access point in the farthest reaches of my zone of my home. That's, that's what I would do. That would be better because I would have more control than these systems right here that you're looking at. Okay. Third thing I want to tell you about. Okay. When you go to the store and you look around, you're going to see crazy stuff like dual band, tri band, and now you're starting to see quad band. And I'll tell you what, guys, for the longest time, this was confusing to me. I'm like, what does that mean? Like even like one and two years ago, three years ago, you see tri band. And that doesn't make any sense to a Wi-Fi person because they're like, oh, wait a minute here. There's 2.4 and there's five. What, what's tri-band? It doesn't even make any sense. And I'll tell you what, you go to these websites and you're just going to get confused reading about all of these things. So I'm trying to unpack it here for you today. And again, it's unless you, unless you like rip open one of these things and do an autopsy, you don't even know for certain because the specs are most of the time wrong or misleading, okay? And so you just have to kind of guess or figure out. So this is what I've been able to surmise. Dual band, if you buy a router, home router at the store, router, wireless router, should, I should call it wireless router, right? Because it's got the two components in one, wireless router. If it's dual band, then that typically means that it's one radio that can flip-flop between two, four, and five, two, four, and five, depending upon what it needs to do, depending upon what's going on in the environment, depending upon the devices that are trying to connect. That's typically what it means, and that's typically why it's less expensive. One radio, flip-flop back and forth. Two, four, and five. I can't do both simultaneously. Unless you have what they call a tri-band. And a tri-band is going to have two radios in it, meaning that you can dedicate one of them to five gigahertz. And that's typically what people buy who want to have their gaming. My recommendation is that you name it, you got to name that network differently so that you know that you're on it, that it's dedicated, because the other radio inside the access point is typically going to be one of these dual bands, which can flip flop between two, four, or five, two, four, or five. And so that's what I've been able to figure out in terms of what makes a tri band. When you see tri band on the box, what are they talking about? Well, typically it's got two radios in it. One is dedicated to five and the other one can flip flop between two, four and five and they call that tri band. Okay. And then lastly, in recent times, now we're starting to see boxes at the store and they say quad band. It's like, what are they talking about? Okay, so this is what I've been able to Okay, is that it typically means, and again, unless you open this thing up and do an autopsy on it, you, you don't know for certain, okay, because the specs are able to understand, but you're typically going to see, okay, it's got a dedicated five or new six gigahertz radio inside of it, and you would have to look for the letter E on the box, like AX, E, or Wi-Fi 6, E, and that would give you an indication that it actually had a six gigahertz radio inside of it. Okay, or if it doesn't have that, then it's gonna have two dedicated five gigahertz radios and then another one that can flip flop between two, four and five, two, four and five, it's a dual band, okay? And again, without opening it up, cracking it open, you, know, you don't know for sure because there are no websites out there that give you really good specifications. They just don't exist. So there you have it. All right, we're coming down the home stretch, guys. <clears throat> We've learned a lot about the specs and how they do or don't 
tell you what's really going on. We've learned a little bit about the hardware that you need, the different components. And we've also talked about device capabilities. How fast can you go versus how fast will you go depending upon your ISP and what package you've purchased. With all of that, I have come up with my Camuli formula that I made up and use as a simple guide. It's a guide. It's not perfect. It's just a guide for shoppers. All right. So I know a lot of you guys out there are very scientific and very detail oriented. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a consumer. And when as a consumer, I use my own little community formula in order to figure out if what I'm about to buy is going to deliver the goods. And it can be very confusing. For example, guys, you look at these router models and you're always going to pick out a little phrase in there. It's going to say something like AC 1900, AX 4200. They're always going to say something like on that on there. And that's supposed to give you an indication of their speed, how fast they can go. And then typically it's going to say like, it's going to say something like AX 5400 capable of 5.4 megabits per second. The AX 6000 wireless router capable of six gigabits bits per second of throughput. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay. It's not true. So you need to decipher these numbers with a poor man's formula, the Camuli formula, in order to help you figure out what you're really going to get. So this is what I do, guys. The first thing that I do is, is in my research, all of these numbers are 160 megahertz wide channels, and we don't use those. We don't use those in five gigahertz. Maybe one day we will in six gigahertz, but we don't use them in five gigahertz. Therefore, the first thing that I do is I just cut that number in half, cut it down to size. So I'm really trying to figure out what the capabilities and limitations of this router are before I go out, before I spend 200 bucks or 300 bucks. I got to know how to decipher this stuff. So I take the number and I cut it in half. Next thing I do is I count the number of antennas and they all have pictures on them. So I can just count the, oh, one, two, three, four antennas so that I can calculate the megabits per second per stream the MPBSS. Again, I just made that up. Okay, so I divide by the number of antennas. I know some of you out there are like, Eric, you, you can't do it that way. Guys, this is not perfect. This is just a consumer's guide. And then finally, what I do is I take the megabits per second per stream and I multiply it times the number of streams in my device. And that is going to give me how fast I can go my device using that router. And so I call this real speed, R sub S should equal or be close to equal ISP sub S, your ISP speed. Real speed should get close to what you're paying for, right? So let's put this into practice. Check it out, guys. So I just went online and I found this one right here. You know, it's about the price that maybe I wanna spend. I take a look. And I see, okay, it's the AC 1900. All right, what does that mean? So I cut it in half, okay? Because I'm not gonna have a 160 megahertz wide channel in my house. So that cuts me down to 950 megabits per second. I divide by three antennas, okay? And I know there's the two, four and the five and all of that stuff. Again, this is a poor man's calculation. And then what I do is I, my Windows device that I have right in front of me right now, I'm gonna multiply the 317 megabits per second per stream times two, and I should be able to go approximately 634 megabits per second. That's what I'm hoping to be able to go, okay? That's the fastest that I, I'm hoping that I should be able to go. Now, what do you do next? Remember, the formula is R sub S equals ISP sub S. So if I'm buying a gig plan, why? Okay, the fastest I'll be able to go is 600, maybe 700 megabits per second because the math isn't perfect. You guys know that, okay? It's not perfect. So why am I, I think that I'm doing the greatest thing in the world by going out and spending $99 a month on a one gigabit per second plan. And I'm not even gonna be able to achieve that with my devices in my house. It's a waste of money, okay? And again, speed is the issue, but speed is a two-way, it happens on both ends. 
the device and its capabilities, your network and its capabilities, your ISP and its capabilities. Let's look at another example. Okay, so we got the Nighthawk AX4200. Ah, oh, it's AX. That means that, right, I should be able to take advantage of 1024 QAM. It's also the latest protocol, and we always advise getting the latest standard, the latest protocol, Wi-Fi 6. All right, so if I look closely at the model number, it says AX4200. The 4200 is a theoretical number, they, they always round it, you know, because it's marketing, right? So they're not going to say the data rate is, you know, 3980, you know, they're, they're not going to call it the 80, the AX3986, they're just going to, or whatever, they're going to round it to the nearest whole number. So I take that, it's on a 160 megahertz channel, so I got to cut it in half. Then I count the number of antennas, there's always a picture on the box, so I should be able to do that. Now the new Nighthawks, they've got the wings coming out of them, so you got to look and see how much are in it. Okay, Nighthawks look like they have Batman wings. Those have six antennas in them. That is in the specs. So I do my little calculation. And again, this is not 100% accurate, but it just gives me a guide. 525 megabits per second per stream times my two stream device. And I should be able to go one gigabit per second. Look at that. RS is approximately equal to ISPS gig speeds. So when I get this router and I buy the gigabit plan from my ISP and with my computer, I should be, you know, and I've got perfect conditions and all of that so that I can achieve, you know, the 256 or the 1024 QAM, I should be able to go about a gig. And that is awesome because remember what Keith Parsons says. He says, get them on, get them off, get them on, get them off. And if you're able to do that and alleviate congestion, for the devices in your house, then everybody in the house is gonna have a better experience, right? So there you have it. You're achieving what you're paying for. So here we go, guys. In conclusion, in conclusion, don't be fooled or confused by the false specs. I cannot tell you how many, I mean, you can go to two websites and they will tell you two completely different things for the same wireless router. It's, it's frustrating. And some of the things, they don't even make sense. They don't even, and if you're skilled in the art of wireless, you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't even make sense, some of the things that they say about these devices. They don't understand. Two, don't forget about the pieces parts. You get one box from your ISP. It's got the modem, it's got the router, and it's got the wireless all in one. If you want the control so that you can achieve the speed which is the whole point of our discussion today, then you got to know that you need the modem and the router and the access point. And you want to make sure that you have the two in one or the three in one or the one, one in one, and that you have everything that you need in order to make the connection. All right. And then finally, you can use the Camuli formula as a consumer shopping aid. Just a simple, easy, because these numbers, they get confusing. Wow, that one's got eight antennas. What does that mean? It's got three antennas. That one only has two antennas. This one says AC 1900. That one says 6,000. So I just gave you a simple way to try to unpack that uh, so that you can make a decent decision. Not perfect, but who knows? So there it is, guys. We did it. We did it. Heather, what do you think about that? Maybe, uh, you know, in your new home that you have there, uh, you can fill the space with one of these awesome setups that we just spoke of, and you will be able to make a good decision based upon what you learned today. Heather? Yep. <laughs> I definitely will, because uh, as soon as you mentioned not putting your router tucked away in a corner, I uh, turned my camera off because I was ashamed because <laughs> it is sitting in a corner over there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You got to get that yep. thing out in the open. Hey, you know what? Get those antennas up and, you know, put some, you know, you know, put, put I don't know, deck, you know, paint, I don't, you don't want to paint them, but, you know, do, you know, Make it into a centerpiece. Get that thing. Yeah, in the we'll dress it up. Yeah, dress yep. it up. That's right. Dress yep. it up somehow. Make it a piece of art. Yes, it'll it'll re it'll be a conversation piece. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we do have some questions. The chat has been nonstop active, so oh, really awesome. 
I, I um, hope so. Yes. Yes. <laughs> lots of conspiracy theories over here. Lots of people <laughs> saying Wi-Fi extenders are evil. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And then Carrie asks if anyone has used Gryphon. Never even heard of that. How configurable is it? I'm literally about to purchase a replacement for my aging Orbeez for my new house. Have you heard of Gryphon, Eric? I haven't. I haven't heard of it. I don't know if anybody else is out there has heard of it. Maybe if Jim was with us today, he had heard of it. But, um, you know, today is all about kind of the consumer space. And from a consumer space standpoint, that's not something that I've heard of. And um, how do you spell that? I want to look it up. It's uh, G-R-Y-P-H-O-N. Griffin. Gryphon? Oh, Gryphon. I, I bet Gryphon. it's Griffin. I bet I'm just dumb and said Gryphon. You know what? I'm just going to, we're going to make it. Oh, look, Carrie put something in the chat for us to, to look that up. Griffin. It probably is Griffin. Um, Andrew says nobody puts AP in the corner. That's so funny. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Right. We can get um, shirts, you know? <laughs> yeah, like that. Exactly. It's like, oh, that's a great meme. Yes, I'm going to make one. I'm going to put on social. I'll have to uh, make sure to give Anders props for that one. In the corner. I'll tell you what, when I moved my router from the corner upstairs office uh, of my house down to the middle of my house down in the living room, my whole world changed. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. And a lot of people make this mistake. Um, so figure out a way to get that thing in the middle of your house personally, I like that better than a mesh system. I mean, if you have to go mesh, go mesh. But I think that you're also losing some control with mesh because you don't know when your device is going to roam or not roam. You don't know how far apart these things need to be in order to create the, 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 the signal strength difference. And I mean, in, in most people's house, this one says, is it minus 65? And this one is at minus 69. And so you're never going to roam. And so you just wasted all of that money. Um, so, you know, th those things should be spread apart. You know, don't just have one in the kitchen and one in the living room. I don't think that's going to help you at all. It would be better to have just one somewhere in the middle. Again, in my opinion, if anybody in the chat's got some opinions on that, they can certainly chime in. Anything else interesting? Sounds, in the chat? Yeah, it's, of course, we got immediate response. It says, what if your office is in the corner? Which is funny because historically in every other place I've been, my uh, router has always been in my office and now it's on my office is on the opposite end so uh, I'm definitely going to need to do some configuration over here well you know what I mean now because of when I moved my my wireless router now I get awesome wi-fi when I'm sitting out on my deck okay so oh that's nice deck yeah. wi-fi deck wi-fi is important deck it's a very underrated piece of <laughs> that's right advice there Deck Wi-Fi is very important. I never, I don't have to worry about, you know, because I'm getting too far away. Now my computer is going to kind of roam on over to 2.4. I don't have to worry about that anymore because I still get really strong signal strength, whether I'm upstairs or downstairs or out on the deck. Okay. So there you Absolutely. Go. All right. Let's do one more. So we do have a question in the Q&A panel. Have you seen 3x3 AX MacBooks? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Wi-Fi 6... Um, I thought, I mean, the, the, they, the newest MacBooks that just came out that were announced just a week or two ago, I thought that those were Wi-Fi 6 3x3s, those MacBook Pros. So somebody uh, out there skilled, uh, more skilled in Apple than me can confirm or deny those allegations, but I'm pretty sure those are Wi-Fi 6 3x3s. Awesome. Those Sweet. Well, any now they don't, yeah, no, not, not iPhones. iOS is a, you know, the iPhones are totally different. Um, and also, we haven't seen Apple come out with a um, device yet for six gigahertz. We'll probably see that. We might see that in the fall. That would be interesting because they always have an event in the fall just in time for Christmas. I'm wondering right. if we're getting into the six gigahertz game then. So there you have it. Yep, yep. All right. I think that is it for Q&A. Any final thoughts, Eric? Wow. You know, I mean, it's tough being a consumer and we deal with this stuff every day, all the time. But, you know, when it comes to our own little castle and making sure that we have great Wi-Fi for ourselves and for our loved ones, it's a lot to, to consider. So hopefully today we were able to unpack a little bit of this so that it's a tiny bit less confusing for people who are trying to improve the Wi-Fi for themselves. So there you have it. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Eric. And of course, thanks to all of you for being here today. We would not be here without you. Um, and we will be back same time, same place. So we will see you then. Thanks, everyone. Bye.